my entity, so I took definitions that are not from me. So the formulation is uh, harder, but uh, what is a temporary, uh, temporary in order to produce specific effect? Oftentimes, tangible uh, uh, that can be quantified and monetized, and which are in line with the period, a cost and constraint of uh, predefined quality. A project is specific. A, uh, it is a, a specific object with results that can be quantifiable and for which there is no, no problem to conduct a financial and economic analysis. Well, the process, well, the NAS is a program. A program is generally a portfolio of a pro project which is managed together as a, an entity, as a unit, with the objective to achieve result and uh, common benefits, which are most oftentimes intangible. So uh, this is at a high level, uh, such as uh, poverty reduction or food security, for example. And so these programs in general have, um, they intervene at the level of a sector or they get to intervene in various sectors. They involve different sectors. And uh, there are programs at country level or inter-country level. The investment plan is uh, at a high level as well. This is the third point. So this time around, it is uh, at the level of the country. And the goal is to try to identify and prioritize all the investment that are required for achieving um, object, high level objectives such as uh, uh, the modernization of the uh, Greek sector, uh, or the first generation of uh, uh, NIPE, was uh, related to uh, agriculture, uh, increasing the agriculture GDP. This time around, we talked about the objective of uh, uh, food and nutritional security. So, if you have these three entities, uh, point uh, gathered. Uh, uh, oh, it means, uh, oh, another slide to represent. No, it is different. This is a uh, various types of plan. So we're going to talk about the investment plans, rather. Uh, this is uh, me writing that. Maybe I'm mistaken, and uh, you should tell me. The first generation of NIPE that uh, really correspond to, that correspond to this is, uh, yeah, according to what I got, I understood the main objective was uh, to comment the aggregate GDP of 6% per annum. 6% per annum, this was the objective set at the CADEP level. And now, um, according to what I understood, the second generation of uh, NIP, uh, uh, ANS, uh, FNS include uh, um, considerations, related, extended considerations. So you strained the scope and investment scope beyond the agri sector to ensure that the agri sector and the develop rural development sector will contribute to food security and nutrition. According to what I understood, the content of the NIAPS, uh, NIAPS uh, uh, is likely to be broader than the first generation. And uh, I'd like also to talk about uh, the investment plan, country investment plans. Uh, this morning I was alluding to the experience that I had. Uh, that uh, some country in Asia had, they tried to develop uh, uh, investment plan, country investment plans uh, for food security, nutrition, agriculture, food security, and nutrition. These plans, from the onset, they had wanted to to prioritize investment, uh, contributing to food and nutritional security, um, following the framework of. Uh, uh, of uh, results of FAO, the framework proposed by FAO, which is uh, uh, the avail availability, access, and utilization of food. So the definition uh, that date back uh, uh, to 1986, so uh, of food security. Based on this definition of food security, countries wanted to create a plan that are, per nature, multi-sector wide. It is not only uh, the agri sector, but all the other sectors, including rural development, health, sanitation, and so on and so forth. These plans are, according to what I understood, these plans are uh, broader than uh, uh, the uh, NIPE, FSN, FNS. A small bracket on these uh, investment plans that are um, uh, followed in uh, uh, NIPE in Asia, the first generation, uh, did not include any financial and economic analysis, nor did the second generation, but they are reflecting on a way to introduce the economic and financial plan, but they don't know how. So we are all in the same case. So, um, so this was uh, 
to to restablish a bit, restore the difficulties that we had in uh, in conducting a financial and economic analysis and the NIPs, FS, FNS. Uh, at the project level, generally, the activities are well, properly defined. We have a limited number of components. Generally, we have uh, two or three components. Um, so uh, it is easier to uh, confine the activities and the costs and benefits and to define the costs and benefits. And also, generally, we have a number of uh, stakeholders which are well defined. But, so a project, uh, well, uh, well, well, I don't like the word beneficiaries, but uh, well, 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 uh, well, include 50,000 uh, stakeholders, be it a farm. In terms of plants, we have a broader definition, which the interventions are generally multiple, there are many. And so sometimes, uh, as uh, Edgar was explaining this morning, the costs are trying to find them uh, in a less detailed manner, in a less specific manner. The level of beneficiaries respected to the beneficiaries is higher. So it means uh, as part of the project, uh, we have uh, managed to define um, uh, the main objective as uh, things that are being quantified or increase of revenue, increase of the agricultural production. Generally, when we talk about the NIF, um, uh, FSN, uh, FNS, uh, so we're talking about a high level uh, economic growth, uh, the, uh, the level of uh, for security, and we have a high number of actors, stakeholders, uh, those including the population of the countries. This makes the task harder to conduct uh, the financial and economic uh, analysis. What I propose now is to cast a glance, uh, um, I want to, uh, to cast a glance of, uh, as, uh, at the example of Rwanda uh, that recently re developed the second generation of plan and uh, that proposes in uh, their plan, uh, there was an, an annex uh, that uh, presents the financial and economic uh, considerations of their plans. Of their plan. So I want us to cast a glance at it. So these uh, three or four slides, they call it the investment plan in the agri sector, PISA. It is over five years, so from 2014 uh, to 2018 included. So, so um, uh, this is, uh, so we, we are here on uh, uh, an ag agric objective. The goal is to increase and, and boost the uh, uh, production for uh, uh, 5% and extend the development of value chains. So it goes beyond the agri sector. Of production, uh, processing and marketing and so on and so forth. And so, the, as, uh, in the case of Rwanda, the investment plan is uh, composed of four uh, strategic programs and uh, 24 components, which are uh, 24 sub-programs. And the first uh, program is uh, inter inter transformation of agriculture and uh, uh, animal resources. The second one is research of uh, extension, tra technology transfer, organization of farmers. The third uh, program, uh, strategic program uh, is on um, so the uh, harvest, uh, uh, processing of product, development of value chain and, and extended investment through the private sector. And uh, the fourth one is uh, uh, related to institutional development and uh, to the questioning aspects such as gender and nutrition. Here, uh, we have, uh, well, the framework the strategic framework of uh, the result framework of uh, Rwanda, where they try to compare the baseline what exists uh, during the preparation of the plan in 2013 and 2012-2013 20, with uh, the target 2017-2018. Uh, so they distinguish what they call high-level results, uh, for, uh, so uh, which are uh, which relate to agriculture. Uh, to the, uh, that relate to the, develop, the development of uh, agri GDP and also to reduction of rural poverty. Another criterion, which is on, uh, it is uh, a plan of uh, a modernization of agriculture. So one of the main criterion, the criterion for evaluation is the increase of land that, that will be under modernized agriculture use. 
with the model utilization of techniques. And uh, uh, there is another criteria for Rwanda, which is uh, the exploitation of agric products. And there, uh, and then uh, beneath that, we have uh, intermediate results. That uh, the intermediate results are more concrete and quantifiable in terms of hectare, mainly which correspond to uh, Rwanda is a country of uh, hills, so they have uh, pro problems of erosion, soils that are protected from erosion, erosions and that are managed in a very sustainable way. And uh, surface areas or land, developed land in terms of uh, infrastructure and irrigation. And uh, the other, other intermediate, intermediate outcomes that will be directly used in the financial and economic analysis these are results in terms of productivity and production. So we have uh, the pr productivity that took, uh, once again, they selected uh, some, some commodities, not all commodities. So uh, cassava, coffee, milk were selected. And uh, they uh, assigned uh, targeted objectives at the end of the implementation of the plan. Uh, same for production of uh, milk. And there, however, it is uh, beneath that, uh, these are indicators, quantitative indicators that are not monetized, the number of um, technology developed particularly, and the number of farmer organization, so that reflects the institutional development in the country. Here, we have, uh, it is interesting because we have a part, part uh, of it will be monetized and uh, another part will not be monetized. But it is important in the financial and economic analysis to reflect these uh, various uh, uh, advantages expected. So uh, the, just, uh, just uh, 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 fast uh, glass, uh, the plan, the, the total cost is uh, 1.2 billion of dollars. When I say, well, it is in the intermediate scenario, I don't know what you do, do in the case of ECOWAS, but uh, in the case of Rwanda, they did, uh, they made th three cost scenarios. So the intermediate cost, but also if they managed to mobilize more resources, uh, so a scenario, a more optimistic scenario, and uh, if they cannot do it, uh, mobilize those resources, this is a more pessimistic scenario. So the provided for all these possibilities. This, so what they, they did is that over, uh, out of the 24 sub-programs, they have they, uh, calculated the uh, benefits only on nine of these sub-programs. And uh, in fact, they uh, represent, uh, this, uh, this nine represent 77% of the total cost. This is a majority of the cost. But also what they explain is that the 20, the 23, the remaining, remaining 23 percent, they did not evaluate the direct benefits. Benefits they did not quantify and monetize the direct benefit, benefits, but they assumed that these 23 percent were necessary for the to materialize the benefits of the whole plan. So this will lead to uh, strengthening institution strengthen. There is no monetary calculation of benefits, but they consider that this uh, investment is necessary if we want the, what the benefit of the other component of the plan to be achieved. So this is their reasoning, and I think this is a reasoning that we should use as part of the investment plans here. So. Uh, so uh, uh, this uh, is uh, the, the 23 percent that I were, uh, alluded to, which are soft investment. Uh, they, they are not in terms of infrastructure or uh, to develop directly the production, but they uh, they have uh, they were taken into account in the cost of uh, NIPE uh, in the economic and financial analysis. For example, we have research, uh, agri exploitation, agri farms. So. Uh, so it was uh, necessary for them to materialize the benefits on the irrigation networks, but uh, they, uh, the, we cannot assign directly benefit to, to uh, them alone. Uh, so the benefits are estimated over 25 years. And uh, uh, the benefit will contribute to the uh, agriculture growth, largely. The analysis also um, so I tried to quantify, uh, considering that this was one of the objectives of the country to increase uh, rural jobs, rural employment. So it also included uh, job creation, 
as uh, one of the benefit, direct benefits of uh, uh, NIPE. And uh, they assign a value, a merchant value to it, uh, by saying that the remuner average remuneration rate was uh, $0.95 per day. Uh, so th this is considered a benefit. So then they also they uh, make, uh, made the uh, evaluation of these nine sub-programs based on uh, mo activity models, as I was explaining this morning. So the uh, ir irrigation, uh, land conservation, and so on and so forth. Here, too, I have uh, made the list of uh, these uh, activity models. So we have uh, uh, cropping on uh, irrigated areas, uh, crop, uh, cropping on uh, non irrigated areas, cropping in uh, lowlands. So this is the invest, uh, investment plan. So the, in the uh, development of this irrigated and non irrigated area, uh, cooperating for uh, husbandry, producing milk, uh, drying of uh, crops with uh, funding of an investment plan for the facilities, drying facilities. So the storage of cultures, uh, this has also a uh, direct uh, financial benefit and uh, post-harvest transport. Uh, we also have uh, activity models that show impact of employment, uh, agri-employment, for example, for people uh, landless. So there's an analysis at this level. And also there's a model that shows uh, carbon sequestration uh, that derive from uh, soil conservation. So um, uh, this is uh, uh, what uh, Rwanda did with a summary of uh, the, the financial and economic analysis. Here you have on your left hand side the nine programs that I alluded to earlier uh, where they try to calculate for each um, of the sub-programs the investment cost you can see here that this is the total cost that I was alluded to, 1.2 billion. This is the 15, the other 15 sub-programs for which I did not conduct any economic and financial analysis, and this is the cost of the nine programs. So for this program, they calculated, they calculated the, uh, in French, well, uh, well the uh, uh, net actual value, and uh, they calculated the uh, profitability rate. The interesting part is that uh, the, we have uh, one of these activities, uh, the rural roads, uh, this is the feeder roads uh, has a negative result because it did not appear profitable. But, well, they included the feeder road in the investment plans. So, uh, well, I didn't go and uh, I did not receive any explanation for that, but one of these explanations is to say if you don't have this feeder road, Maybe the other components cannot uh, be uh, uh, produce the benefit estimated here. So, so that's it, um, and uh, they did that for each of the these sub programs, and that after they do, did the total here. With uh, so they calculated even the profitability rate and uh, net prices uh, for all the value uh, of value of the investment plan as a whole. If you have twenty five percent. A profitability rate for an economist, so it is good. So this uh, is the last, the last slide. After that, well, well, how are you going to manage the next steps? So uh, how are you going to organize the uh, group works? I believe that the first thing to do. of the implementation of the NIPE. This is a way to convince the investor, qualitatively speaking, uh, in order to have a good uh, qualitative discussion of uh, their benefits. So, and after, you know, well, there's a need uh, uh, for us to, to, do, uh, to make a selection of uh, the benefit, benefits and activities or components or sub-programs for which we believe 
that with the available data in the country, we can uh, conduct a cost and benefit analysis. Therefore, I think for, for like for Rwanda, we will select, we cannot do for every sub program. So we'll take some element of the investment plan. We'll take, well, the element that has a more important cost. Uh, it is important to uh, see this way. If an element represents 1% of the cost, we need to be pragmatic. Uh, we will not do that. And if there is a, a single activity, uh, if the development of irrigation in such and so region represents 30% on the pin, uh, NIPE, we need absolutely to conduct an, a cost and benefit analysis of uh, such intervention. So I believe that uh, it will depend on the situation in the various countries. And activities or component or sub-programs for which we believe that with the available data in the country, we can uh, uh, conduct a cost and benefit analysis. Therefore, uh, I think for, for, like for Rwanda, we will select, we cannot do for every sub-program. So we'll take some element of the investment plan. We'll take, well, the element that has a more important cost. Uh, it is important to uh, see this way. If an element represents 1% of the cost, we need to be pragmatic. Uh, we will not do that. And if there is a, a single activity, uh, if the development of irrigation in such and so region represents 30% on the pin, a NIPE, we need absolutely to conduct an, a cost and benefit analysis of uh, such intervention. So I believe that uh, it will depend on the situation in the various countries. We will now make a selection of activities for, for which we will conduct a cost, quantified cost and benefit analysis. So. I'm repeating the same thing here. So from uh, this moment, from existing data, we should uh, uh, draw uh, financial models. So if we talk about uh, benefits, uh, that is uh, at uh, farm level and uh, uh, enterprise model, if we talk about value chains. Um, and uh, uh, the last step will be to uh, aggregate these costs and benefits. So we will aggregate uh, activity for which uh, we uh, conducted a cost benefit analysis and will add I think that we can we should consider all the cost uh, in the NIPE in the uh, cost and benefit analysis we will quantify only a part of the benefits but all the costs need to be included in the final analysis so I'm done so But if you have questions, I can come back to what I said before. And then uh, we'll So is that any request for the floor on the presentation? Uh, plan versus, versus program and versus project. You saw what was presented as part uh, in the case of Rwanda. Maybe you, you are used to that, but I see that this uh, work is uh, very fine-tuned in order to uh, use the lock frame the targets and at global level uh, and at intermediate level and so on and so forth. These are things uh, you need to pay attention to. So can we move? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in connection to the Rwandan case, the uh, table that he just showed, uh, I only saw the investment, well, the, uh, uh, the net actual net values. Well, the uh, actual net values include uh, the cost, no, the benefits. Uh, I would like also to see a column, rated, uh, column for benefits. So and see if uh, I don't know if it is possible. This way we'll see how they were able to quantify and evaluate these uh, benefits. And that's a good question. Well, I'm not sure that I have the answer because I do not uh, think that they provided the more detailed tables 
in the document that I consulted. This is also the difficulty. One of the difficulty is that we have results, but we do not have uh, the uh, calculations, uh, detailed calculations that support this result. This is a main challenge when um, when we can do the evaluation at the end of a project. Uh, uh, the donors like uh, World Bank uh, ask us uh, to do uh, at the end of any project with uh, ICR and this uh, completion report. And for this, uh, we need to do an, uh, an ex post financial and economic analysis. We should compare the results of this uh, post an, uh, analysis uh, to what was done before the project. Uh, so in order, so uh, then, then we do not find uh, the, uh, the detailed calculations that they used. This is one of the difficulties. So this is why we should uh, do again the various models. In the document that I consulted, I consulted, they did not provide the, uh, the detailed figures of the benefits, the way they made the calculation, they estimated the benefits. So we cannot use the case of Rwanda for that. I had a, a small concern. Countries that are absent, countries that are absent, how could they catch up and uh, how, uh, do, include them in the dynamics? And then all the countries that are absent are English-speaking countries. Well. Well, I don't want people to believe that well, they are neglected once again. So I don't know. Um, uh, is there any method to bring them back quickly, uh, even if we go fast? Uh, how should we provide this general information to them so that, or while the others are working, are we going to uh, work with them um, in separately to provide them with uh, such uh, basic information before include, introduce them in breakout sessions? So I want us to be organized this way. So, so sorry, the last. Now, uh, you, you will work in group. And my, our friend from Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and Liberia will join us today later on this afternoon, they need this uh, gra gra grassroots information or background information. And uh, in order uh, to, to uh, work in group, but there are only three. How are you going to do that? And in addition, how to accompany countries that are, uh, far, uh, that are a little bit advanced? How do you see this? So I believe that we, you're true. We need, to, we need to sit with them and uh, tomorrow morning or maybe, uh, well, maybe you spent one hour with, with them and repeat this presentation in English because they, they are English, English speakers, but it is uh, useful to do that. But we're not going to do that with uh, the whole group. We'll do that in parallel and, uh, and the country will start their group work in parallel and then well, well, they will start tomorrow with uh, this background information. As you are going to do the presentation in English, can't we ask our friends from Ghana and uh, Gambia to join them? Or you believe that we, you are comfortable to, to take only these uh, Anglophone groups? So I'm asking the question to our friend from Ghana and Gambia. Tomorrow morning, uh, we are going to take Nigeria, Liberia, uh, and Sierra Leone. They will do the presentation in English during one hour, one hour and a half uh, before sending them in uh, uh, group works. Do you want to join them or you want to join the first group? Ghana and Gambia. This question is addressed to you. I think it would be okay to join the group that will come from Nigeria so that we have just one thing for the Anglophones. Yes, I have similar opinion. I think with straight away English presentation, it will be clearer than the, uh, what we are getting. Merci, merci beaucoup. Donc, demain, 
Thank you, thank you. So uh, tomorrow, b between 9 and 9.30, and 10, 10, 30, 9, 10, 30, you uh, will uh, repeat this uh, part uh, before you uh, do the group work. So, and uh, the 10 other countries can uh, do their group work. So, so, have you understood properly what uh, he's asking you? Uh, I'm going to uh, take one by one log frame. What does do he What does he want you to do? I have another concern. Uh, in fact, for countries who are yet to have any logical framework or any costing, uh, uh, I got familiar with uh, your your uh, uh, knife of the first generation. Look at it and see whether it is full, complete. In order to do an exercise with this, otherwise, you uh, if you don't work, so you will believe that you uh, have uh, understood or uh, you have uh, mastered everything. Meanwhile, you have not. When you follow, you have the feeling that you understand. But when you start working, you will realize that uh, well, you do not master everything. Well, uh, my my opinion is that for countries who that uh, do not have any costing and or financial analysis. Uh, if in the first document you will work on your log frame and then you will look at the other years, uh, your investment plan that you had prepared, uh, if I got you right, uh, well, it is Cabo Verde, so uh, they, they are left with uh, uh, costing and uh, financial analysis, uh, Senegal and Guinea-Bissau. Mainly it is these three countries that are at the same level. Senegal, in your, in your friend, First uh, night, uh, you did uh, causing financial analysis and finan economic analysis. Guinea Bissau, it is FAO that uh, developed the document. So, uh, Cape for Cape Verde, I don't know, uh, it is, is it uh, FAO that supports you? In the first plan, there was a costing, but there was no economic and financial analysis, right? So, well, uh, my advice is uh, for you to make this uh, effort. And by this year, well, you can review your log frame and come back. Anyway, you have to endeavor, because if you don't make the effort, the exercise will not be profitable for you. If, uh, well, you don't make mistakes, uh, uh, you will not make uh, headways. For the uh, remaining seven countries, I think you, sh uh, you take your document, you have your log frame, you made a costing, and maybe you... I was saying that they all have a log frame on uh, costing. Maybe you, continue, you should need to continue explaining to them when you say, well, they should formulate the three categories of benefits. You have to further explain to them. Is that, should I explain now? Yeah, we can take it again. But I just wanted to say one thing. Um, I believe that, well, the countries uh, who are yet to have costings, so it will be more hard, it will be harder. So, but uh, the, this exercise is worth doing. I agree. Uh, in addition, the costing should uh, come shortly because if you want to have an investment plan in the three months ahead, uh, even if you have a uh, summary evaluation of cost uh, or use the cost estimates of the first uh, uh, night, so you need to uh, make assumptions. This will be, oh uh, yeah, it is worth making the exercise even if you don't have any cost estimate. Uh, the most effective way is uh, to divide the, the groups the groups depending on the investment status. If uh, several countries are not uh, have not prepared costs, maybe we put them together and they discuss together. And the other countries uh, that have prepared costs and the other countries who have already prepared a preliminary financial analysis will be put together. This way, it is more effective than having a group that. Uh, uh, is a mixture of everything. So we took note. First, first of all, we have a group of uh, five Anglophone countries. They will come back on the, the background information before they join groups. So the, the 10 other countries will be grouped per subgroups, depending on their investment status. They are countries that uh, have prepared a costing and financial and economic analysis. They will make one group, and they are countries who have prepared costing and uh, they are yet to have financial and economic analysis. This 
who is another group of countries. And the third group is made of countries that are under the process of finalizing a project without any economic and financial analysis. They will make one group. They will make up one group. The uh, remaining 10, I think if we categorize them this way, it will not work. I think that we need a mixture. We need to mix them. Uh, so countries uh, who, has, uh, who have prepared a cousin with a financial and economic analysis, we can take the countries who do not have any at all, so we will mix them together, and countries who do not have any costing or financial economic analysis, we can uh, be, they can be in the other two groups. No, 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 no. Irrespective of your investment status, they want to find you in your investment status and to support you. So uh, it is not... Uh, uh, so we are uh, no, uh, we, there is no mixture. You are not the one that trained the others. No, they are trainers, instructors that will train you. So you have your economic and financial analysis, and they are going to cast a glance at it and uh, see, look at what what uh, is missing, and to accompany you. So you don't have it yet, and if you have uh, the technical part, based on that, they will tell you uh, cor you have to correct. So uh, the log frame. Now, is it clear? So based on that, they will explain to you the other steps. And uh, uh, so if, uh, well, the uh, other, uh, so if you mix, the other will not. Uh, the countries that have done so will not uh, make any progress. Other questions or comments? to um, the economic and financial analysis. The countries include Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, and Guinea. I would like to know if you can uh, explain briefly during two of uh, three or five minutes uh, what was uh, the approach that you used, uh, how uh, was it calculated, uh, or how it was done, how was the process, and if you can uh, further elaborate on uh, the methodology, uh, global methodology uh, that, were, that was used. Thank you. I will come there. I will get there. This. So uh, I wanted to ask them, well, to state the country experience. So uh, I just wanted uh, uh, to, so that we can uh, agree what you, we have to do now. From now, now you have all the uh, background information. I mean, the 10, the 12 countries, you have the background information to a uh, working group. So you understood what you are requesting now. You are uh, suggested to uh, move depending on advancement level. Um, no, so it is a principle that we agreed on. And after, before we uh, depart, uh, uh, based on that, I'll tell you group one, group two, group three, group four. Okay? So now, uh, as uh, if we have time, so we can come back. Uh, I hope my, that my time is right. In connection uh, with uh, the distribution made by the country breakout station, if you take countries uh, that has, uh, have already uh, conducted their costing financial and economic analysis, they will just uh, uh, work on the last steps. They will uh, quickly will see. But so uh, now the countries that only have a logic framework, they will do the work. Uh, the, I mean that the groups will not have the same uh, level, uh, uh, bulk of work. So th some can uh, uh, finish their work in one day, or other will finish uh, will need uh, two days or or three days. Don't you think that we need to try to to put, for example, to take examples? I was saying that countries uh, who said that they have conducted financial analysis and costing on this will take the document as a basis, or will all take 
log frame. Log frame work as a basis, and now we take the process in order to better understand, because we are here to understand. Because if I am part of a group uh, where the countries have already d done the costing and financial analysis, well, I'm not, I will not be uh, uh, interested in other steps and know where I am. Well, by all means, I believe that uh, even for countries who have already done a costing and a financial analysis, it is worth uh, uh, revisiting all the steps, all the phases. I think also for in order to discuss between the countries in the same group. Uh, systematically, well, the countries who have done this, uh, the result uh, is that they will have uh, something uh, more solid. The other countries of the, this seminar, they will have uh, something preliminary. But for all countries, we are going to try to adapt to uh, go through all the steps. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, well, the countries are going to present their experience, and now we'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, focus on the countries uh, with more experience, and we are going to ask them how they, uh, how they work, how they achieve that. This is a way of, uh, by way of sharing experience. But all the countries will go through all the steps. Well, uh, who wants to take the floor? Uh, you do not, uh, you're not prepared. It was in the program, anyway, in the agenda. Cote d'Ivoire, Benin, and so on. Who want to try? No, this morning when we were, were uh, making the update, we were saying that, uh, well, in Benin, we tried to, um, to conduct a, a short analysis, summary analysis, because when we uh, validated our our uh, template, uh, so in which we should uh, uh, include a ni the NIPE. Uh, there was uh, this uh, uh, financial economic analysis, uh, but uh, with time, the time that we had, uh, and uh, based on resources available to make this work, we were obliged to well, focus on a way to do th things that are simpler. The first thing that we tried to do, um, as uh, we have the indicators in relation to the achievement of the main uh, productions that we agreed on, uh, vegetal, uh, animal, and, uh, and uh, fisheries production, we tried to estimate the value of uh, such productions by calculating for, uh, well, for those we master the uh, loss rate post-harvest loss rate. When we determine these values, we try to conduct an analysis uh, in relation to the cost of uh, NIPE FNS. Uh, this is what we did, very simply. But uh, we made an analysis also at uh, the level of food security by estimating the coverage, the uh, food coverage rate. And uh, depend, depending on the objectives, uh, production objective that we assigned for ourselves and, and in relation to the coverage of the need and the coverage of the, the need that we'll achieve in, depending on the increase of the population. By 2021, we try to determine this rate and make the comparison. Depending on, on, depending on the actions that we envisioned, also we tried to, um, in relation to the impact on gender, particularly women empowerment, this is a, a qualitative analysis that was conducted at this level. Uh, that is uh, 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 how Benin addressed this issue in order to make headway in the process. So can I ask a question? No, it is uh, it's quite interesting. According to, according to what I got from you, you tried to conduct a global analysis. I mean that you did not enter into details of programs and sub-programs, but uh, you somehow uh, tries, uh, you believe that the implementation of the plan will allow um, the uh, production of uh, uh, food produces, uh, fisheries produces, produces, animal produces, and so on and so proportion. So you conducted this analysis. All the activities of uh, the NIPE will produce this uh, benefit on the production. So you conducted this analysis and you compare that uh, to the uh, food uh, needs of, in the country. So anyway, it was interesting. Thank you.
and the uh, group will actually will uh, review the document and, and see. No, it is interesting. Uh, to answer the question of uh, saying, or saying, well, some countries, uh, well, uh, well, will share with the group what they have, uh, they, they did. This can give idea, ideas to other countries because the experience that I have uh, is beyond that. We also have the pro programs and sub programs, and uh, they have indicators in connected to that. They have target connected to, to these uh, programs and sub programs, their implementation status. And I don't believe that it is uh, 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 encompassing or globalizing. I don't think. This is why I said that we shall come back to that. They must present this to you during the uh, group works and then uh, to see. And uh, what other countries would like to try? Burkina Faso. Uh, regarding Burkina Faso, I, I should say that we uh, benefited from the support of the uh, Agriculture and Food uh, uh, Program Monitoring uh, Program mo Monitoring Program SAPA of FAO. But what happened is that uh, due to time, expert access to uh, well to present data, and uh, we presented those data to us, and they conducted the analysis uh, using some scenarios, trend, trend scenarios, accelerated scenarios. But as national expert, we did not have, we are not able to follow uh, this uh, analysis. They, uh, they uh, uh, debriefed the result to us. Uh, well, they are result on which we, we disagree uh, uh, with them. And uh, we agreed to uh, meet again in order to, uh, for them to uh, proper, properly uh, explain and analyze, analyze this result, result before including them in our document. So we have the tables with us that we can uh, cast a glance at. It is very important after to have tables. You want to take the floor? Uh, no, I just wanted to say that, well, in relation to the indicators, Benin had indicated, detailed indicators, uh, even uh, in, in connection to actions, but uh, the go, uh, uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, because we wanted to conduct the analysis that we want, we have uh, preferred to be global. Otherwise, the analytical framework is uh, detailed. Yeah, go ahead, Johnny. Thank you, Doctor. Regarding Cote d'Ivoire, I think the work that was done with uh, IFPRI was to uh, conduct uh, various scenarios in order to uh, compare uh, situation between the implementation of the Declaration of Malabo and uh, the current situation. If we leave the situation without any intervention, what result are we going to achieve in relation to the various indicators that we studied? So um, it was about uh, seeing the evolution of the poverty rate, or extreme poverty, hunger, and gro growth of a GDP, the growth of the agri sector, the trade in agri produces, and also. Uh, modeli modeling also make it possible to see the various strategic products that we could uh, prioritize as part of our uh, NIPE. Uh, just a question. Uh, have you, well, uh, did you calculate uh, profitability rate or things like that? I don't know uh, the approach of uh, ECOWAS and uh, Rural Hub. If they want to uh, harmonize, do they want to harmonize among the 15 countries, or we should contend with the 
diversify approaches. The ideal thing was to have a harmonized approach, but as they, uh, as they have uh, committed or engaged, already they have uh, engaged in it, uh, as I was saying, uh, the supply, the supply of uh, the FAO to become, uh, well, to include the costing, uh, well, as uh, came in, in July, uh, like the uh, proposal of uh, FPRI. Uh, normally, if countries, countries uh, fast track to end in June. Uh, at Kampala, uh, when we're in Kampala, both IFPRI and FAO said that we had tools. We have tools to improve the quality and so on and so forth. So we asked them, which tools? And they said, well, they have a number of tools. And we said, OK. OK, so join us in Dakar uh, on the 6th and 7th July to present your tools. If we presented their tools and globally their baseline situation, uh, strategic analysis to have a number of uh, milestones and in order to have an idea about the fields or programs that can be, that can carry and Malabo ambitions. So they presented this tool to us. And FAO, well, no, they well, said, well, costing, financial and economic analysis, uh, project engineering. But uh, they, what they presented to us was uh, very quick, was very fast. We felt we did not uh, well uh, see uh, receive all the uh, FAO experience, and this is why where I told them no, I need to, uh, to uh, I need to join. Uh, you should uh, uh, present uh, FAO to us. We know that uh, the experience of FAO is beyond what you presented, and we started with IFPRI. The pro we started the process with the countries. Now we also want to launch a process with FAO. This means that even if uh, not everything is not perfect now, so fr fr uh, we need to not to uh, put it uh, in uh, fit in line with the construction dynamics. So maybe in one year or two years ta time, the capacity will be there. They will have what they want to include in the plan, and then they will catch up with a number of th things when they will develop implementation projects. So we'll build and we move. Maybe in one year or two years time, we will finally have a group dynamics, and the next step will be, well, the, the approach will be homo homogeneous. We need to be pragmatic. So uh, myself, I was uh, a bit uh, uh, surprised when they uh, did, uh, or they told me that I did uh, the financial and economic analysis. Um, because, uh, well, I was telling IFPRI that I believe that you must give us even uh, you must give us three scenarios in the strategic analysis because uh, they also focus on Ma only focus on Malabo. And so we said, well, uh, you can do Malabo, and then the country said, well, if the country said that don't have the financial resources, they will be stuck. So we need Malabo, and we need the scenario. What they are doing, if they implement it, now the scenario, the scenario buys line. So the three scenario. This will be. Uh, this will uh, guide the country in their choice. This will guide the country in their choice. Normally, in the first phase of NIP, when we went with uh, uh, IFPRI, well, these three scenarios, they well, they even told us how uh, the cost of it. So this is what they told us. This time around, though they well, they did not uh, achieve. It, they did it because uh, when we told them, well, uh, that the uh, country. Has a is done in five years. Uh, the, uh, the property should be uh, cut by half, or uh, the revenue will be at so 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 level. It was so much costly, uh, and the country should increase uh, its uh, agriculture by 12 percent. So, in terms of capacity, human capacity, in terms of resources, no country had such resources. So, normally, if they uh, had uh, done the work until the end. IFPRI, I mean, IFPRI, we should have all these three scenarios uh, and, uh, well, and find out the economic benefits, social benefit thereof. We should have it uh, globally. This will be, well, uh, the end. You will take from the, this end and uh, in order to uh, go together. 
but we do not have this. So they did not uh, did that in all the countries. They have not done it yet. Uh, so uh, we are in such situation now where we need to improve by advancing. We cannot normally tell the country to stop. We will improve by making progress. As we have some time, you can. Thank you. So my only problem concerns quantification of uh, the benefit, quantifiable benefit and uh, monetized benefit, particularly regarding the program. In Togo, for example, there was an exercise that we did in the meantime on the development of uh, uh, commodities. If we take the seed, for example, there is a financial and economic analysis that was conducted and allowing us to have uh, the input and output. And this way it is easier. But coming back at program level, where well, several elements enter, uh, are involved. It is not the same uh, commodities, it is not the same products. So how do we achieve then? How do we ensure uh, that uh, we, how do we um, quantify these uh, benefits? Because the cost, we, have, we do have the cost. The costs are generated, so we have the costing, which is properly done. But beyond that, how do we quantify the benefits in order to, to generate uh, the actual value, uh, uh, so to generate, first of all, the cash flow and uh, uh, generate uh, the uh, net value? So this is, this is my worry in this regard, because um, I believe that IFPRI, in, in the meantime, should help us to make a focus. tax expert that was uh, recruited in this line to see whether if uh, the government invests one franc or how much it, uh, does it get in return. We are in this dynamics, but we can do this uh, financial and economic uh, analysis. But my question remains, so how do we evaluate these benefits? This is my concern. Just to clarify a bit, the work done by IFPRI, maybe this can be an input in the process gatherings at the gathering yesterday. Yeah, I talked about three scenarios. I believe that everybody understood what is the first scenario. Target that we know that are uh, uh, distributed in uh, seven th thematics. The third scenario will be the scenario that describes what you plan in your programs currently. Uh, the presenter presented the uh, second last slide where we can we could see Rwanda. We could see two columns. One column presenting the performances current performances of the country, and the second column presented the targets 
described in the country program. We are doing this now for all countries in West Africa. Since we, are, we were asked to include these scenarios that we can call the uh, uh, NIPE FNS project. So it means that your document will be transformed, turned into a table. Everything that you said and all the component can be converted into one effort to transition from one uh, achievement level to a target level. Uh, the, it might be in terms of uh, production and in terms of output. It can be in terms of uh, uh, factor consumption or input consumption. It can be in terms of uh, improvement of yield. It can be in terms of uh, extension of uh, facilities or agri uh, hydro agricultural facilities. All those can be captured by our models and injected in the economy through the model and produce for us results in macro terms. So then we are getting out of, so we will produce macro results. So this is how if we achieve or implement effectively the NIP FNS, how this will produce macro result, macroeconomic result uh, poverty reduction results. Um, uh, we can uh, also uh, get down to meso level. Uh, this is how uh, maize production, sorghum production will be increased. So we can uh, transit from the macro level to the meso level. So if we have time, uh, for some countries uh, that have a basis, a detailed uh, agriculture uh, uh, investigation basis, we can. Uh, Get, we can down the analysis uh, down to uh, a level where we'll say how many farmer, farmers will, will be involved uh, in a check. Well, depending on the information level that we have, but at least we'll produce results at a macro level, macro effect that the program, program can allow to achieve, assuming that you have defined that actions to be implemented at a major level. Level. So this is uh, what we are doing. I would like to make a comment on what we don't do. Maybe this can uh, shed light on people. We do not work on the financial aspect. Uh, maybe uh, by, we, we, we promise in, to toggle by abuse of language that we, if we invest lang uh, one francs, uh, this is uh, uh, how many francs it can yield in return. Uh, this francs, this franc don't understand it in a financial language. And uh, this is what uh, uh, you can uh, obtain uh, with uh, the uh, FAO team is different. The financial and economic analysis should be understood differently uh, than what we ha what did at every level for the first process. Due to the fact that we do not have any respondent in terms of costing of our scenarios, these three scenarios normally should be costed. And you costed the NIPES of the first generation, the first generation NIPES, and we costed our scenarios. Yama was alluded to that. Some scenarios were, were in terms of cost, they were exorbitant. And um, we used uh, a method that we don't recommend to continue using because uh, uh, this is based on elasticities. And this supposes that the countries are using properly each franc, which is modelized to achieve something. If we cannot manage this uh, in, uh, in efficiency, uh, uh, business, it is difficult to use this method. And we have always uh, responded to countries that for the costing and for economic and financial analysis, we don't commit ourselves we, uh, uh, for that, but we are available to uh, provide results or pr prospective uh, analysis that can feed this new step of costing and economic and financial analysis. Thank you.
can I answer your question? I can ans still answer your question if you need more clarification. Are there comments? No, yeah. you have an idea about the 15 countries, so it is a pity that uh, you did not uh, give uh, uh, the people the information. But did you receive, Stefan, uh, did you forward to them many documents? But, Stefan, you are in the process, you are part of the process. Uh, you can have the document, any document you want, and forward it to them. Lesson. So, did you forward it to everyone, to everybody? Yeah. Alasan has uh, forwarded it to you. Please read it uh, this, uh, during the evening and uh, in order to be tomorrow uh, so that you can be more alert tomorrow. So, start reflecting and brainstorming on this uh, various element. Go and take your document. Start organizing your. presentation that I made this morning, you understand that you will need this element tomorrow. So I want you to prepare them for tomorrow morning so that uh, we can start uh, at 10. So for uh, the Anglophone country, we sh should start uh, at 8.30 uh, and uh, through 10. So you have uh, the Gambia, Ghana, and the countries that are joining. So we should give them the information. Uh, Maybe you would uh, uh, deposit the document at the front desk of the hotel. Everybody will reconvene here and uh, will work on the group aspect. So go and prepare yourself. Uh, read the overall presentation and start the preparation, preparatory work. I know that uh, some of you may forward document. If they forward document to us, we will transfer it. But it does not preclude uh, you to have um, documents at hand. So uh, when we, uh, my fear is that we, should, we may be blockaded or blocked uh, or you uh, may be stuck to, to, for zero reasons, photocopy machine reasons.